Hey girls and boys, it is Mr. McAndrew, the math coach. I hope you are doing really well. Um, I'm very excited because we are going to continue our work with multi-digit multiplication. Now you've been doing for a long time, you've been doing single digit multiplication, like six times three, two times eight, five, nine times five, which is great. But now we get into problems like uh, 29 times eight right or 36 times 4 and then eventually this year you're going to get up to problems like i don't know like 283 times 7 or even like 88 times 26 okay but for now all right we're just doing two digit like um 35 times one digit like six multiplication okay we started this before and we're going to continue it you might remember that we did problems like this right, where we had a problem like 8 times 29 or 8 rows of 29. You could also think of that as it's also 29 times 8, either way. And what we said was that we could use an area model to show that, okay? So let's take a closer look at that for a minute. Okay, so before we get into bigger numbers, boys and girls, let's remember what this means with smaller numbers. And it's called the distributive property. Okay, distributive property. And that fancy word, all it means is this. If I have a problem like 7 times 3, and I let's say I don't know what that is, I can break it up into two or more problems. I can break apart the 7 into any two numbers that add up to 7. So for example, I could say 7 equals 4 plus 3. So instead of multiplying 7 times 3, I would multiply 4 times 3, and I would multiply 3 times 3. And if I do 4 times 3, I know that's 12, and 3 times 3 is 9, and if I add those up, I get 21. Okay, so let's, like, what does that mean? So let's take a look at what it means with the area model, which is what we're using. All right, so here is um, three rows of seven. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, where's my, it's not three rows of seven. Okay, I'll be right back. Let me make it three rows of seven. All right, let's try that again, boys and girls. We have three rows of seven. Okay, so we have seven times three or three times seven. So one, two, three rows, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in each row, okay? So the, the width here is three. So that tells us we have three rows, and the length here is seven, okay? Now, the area model tells us that if I multiply seven or three times seven, I'm going to get the number of square units. In other words, boys and girls, if these were like, um, let's say you're going, your class is going to the cafeteria to watch something, and these are chairs that you're going to sit in, right? And the chairs are, there's three rows of chairs, and there's seven um, chairs in each row, okay? So how many chairs are there? Well, there's 21 because 3 times 7 is 21. 7 plus 7 plus 7 gives me 21. But, what the distributive property tells me is that if I can't figure out what 3 times 7 is, I can break it up. So let's pretend like maybe there's an aisle like right there. So you can walk down, right? You know, there's always like an aisle when you're going to like a performance or something. There's like an aisle, right? So now we've broken up 7 into 3 rows of 4 here and then 3 rows of 3 here okay so because seven is is also four plus three so we've broken it up so three times four there's three times four okay it gives me 12 there's 12 chairs on this side and over here there's nine because three rows of three and 12 plus nine equals 20 21 that's kind of bright right there okay 
So you can break it up however you want. And you're always going to get 21 because there's still 21 shares. Let's say that um, we decided to put the row in a different spot, okay? And we broke it up in a different way. So let's say that we did it like this. Decided to put the row right there. I'm mean, sorry, the aisle right there, okay? So we still have seven chairs going across, but we've broken it up into two and five. Is that an S or a five? There we go, okay? So now, sorry, let me make sure that you can see this. So now we have three rows of two, okay, which is three times two, okay, or six, that's six. And over here we have three rows of five, which is 15, because I know what three times five is, five, 10, 15. And six plus 15 equals, you guessed it, 21. Okay, so this is what the distributed property lets us do. All right, and when we, and this is really helpful when we get to bigger numbers because, you know, even I, the math coach, it's, I can't just do like a really big problem in my head without breaking it up. Okay, so let's look at what this looks like with bigger numbers. All right, so boys and girls, what if I have the problem um, five times 23? Okay, so I could think of that as also 23 times five. All right, now I don't know what 23 five times is. I just don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I can figure it out if I break it up. Now there's diff just like we did with the last problem, there's different ways we can break this up. So I could break up the 23 into 20 plus three, right? That's expanded notation because, remember that from place value, expanded notation. The two is worth 20 and the three is worth just three, right? Because that's in the ones place. Now, if I multiply these both by five, this is easier. I know what 20 times five is because I can do that 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay, so I know that. And I know what three times five is, that's 15. And now if I add those up, I get 115. Now, boys and girls, I could have done that Differently, I could have said, well, I also know that 23 is, let's say, 15 plus 8. Okay, so what's 15 times 5? That would be 75, I think. I'd have to check. And 8 times 5, I know that's 40. Let's see, 15 times 5, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. So yeah, it's 75. Now, if I add 75 and 40 together, I get, let's see, 75, sorry, 75, 40, one, yeah, it's also 115, okay? Now, I got the same answer, but did you notice this way was easier for me, right? This multiplying 15 times 5 is a little bit difficult, and then I have to add these awkward numbers. This way was a lot easier, okay? So, we're going to when we use the distributive property with bigger numbers, we're going to use place value. So we're going to do 20 times 5 and then 3 times 5. So remember the math app that I was showing you and that you were able to use um, if you wanted um, uh, last time? So let's take a look at that. All right. So when you open it, and I put a link in your slide, okay, um, in a lot of slides. When you open it, it looks like this. So I'm going to put in five rows of 23. I always like to put the bigger number second because it looks like this. Okay, if I put it first, it goes like this way and it's harder for me to work with. So I like to do it this way. Okay, so five times 23. So here's, here's my five, right? We've got five rows, one, two, three, four, five. And there's 23, let's say chairs, okay, in each row. All right, now if I break it up the way that I did before, I'm going to slide this all the way to where it says 20. Okay, so you can see right there it says 20, and this says, um, sorry, did I say 25? 20 and 3. Okay, yeah, we're doing 20 and 3. So now I'm doing 20 times 5 right here, or 5 times 5 rows of 20, which gives me 100. In fact, you can click this little thing right here, this little I, 
and it gives you the answer, okay? So that's 100, and here you've got five rows of three, one, two, three, four, five, that gives you 15, and if you add these two together, you get 115, okay? So rather than try and figure out the whole rectangle at first, you break it up into five rows of 20 and then five rows of three. Now I could have also done it like I was doing on paper. I could have done it here with, here we go. Here's 15 and here's eight, right? So five rows of 15 and five rows of eight. And here's my 75 and here's my 40 and I still get 115. But again, that's a lot harder, okay? And I could, I could slide this anywhere I want. I could put it right here. Here I have 10 and 13. Now five times 10, that's pretty easy, right? Five times 10 is 50. But five times 13, that's not so easy. So the best way to do it is we break it apart using expanded notation, using place value, okay? All right, so let's do a problem to get, on the next um, slide, you've got some problems to work on. So here's how you can use this and what you've learned to solve the problems. All right, so your slide is going to look like this. Um, it's gonna say multiply two by one digit numbers. All right, here is where you can click for the math app that I'm showing you. And these are the six problems you're going to solve. The first one is the one we're working on right now, which is 23 times five, okay? So um, you can certainly use the math app, right, to help you with this. So, so in this case, right, you would put in five times 23 and you would get, um, it would look like this, and then you need to actually slide it to where it breaks it up using expanded notation. So in this case, it would be 20 and three, okay? What if it was five times, let's go back, let's say, what if it was five times 42? Let's see what that looks like. All right, so it gets smaller because you have to fit it in, right? Now here, I would slide it all the way to 40 and two because there's the four in the tens place, which is 40, and the two in the ones place, which is two. Okay, so here's 40 times five, and here's two times five. 40 times five is 200, and uh, two times five, or five times two is 10. Now we did a lot of work, okay, with um, multiplying like problems like this, five times 40, right? Don't forget, if you multiply five times 40, it's five times four tens. So five times four is 20, but 20 tens would give you 200, okay? So that's 200. All right, so but what are you, so in addition to doing it on this, what I want you to do is you need a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, okay? And what you would do, I'll show you right now. All right, so I'm gonna write down my problem, which is 23 times five. And you can use the rectangle, the math app to help you, but you're gonna draw a rectangle for each problem. So in this case, I'm gonna go like this. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, this is going to be five, and this is going to be 23, okay? But we're gonna break up 23 into 20, right? Which goes from here to here, and then the three is down here, okay? So there's my three, there's my 20, and now, just like on the math app, and you can use the math app to help you with this, 20 times, I want you to write in here, 20, times five equals 100. And down here you've got three times five equals, fi sorry, 15. So then you do 100 plus 15 equals 115 and you have your answer, okay? So for each problem, you can use the math app to help you understand and solve it, but I do want you to draw it out like this. You don't have to do all the grids, that would take you forever, okay? So you have, I think you have six problems, all right? Um, if you need to go back and review the video, please do that, and um, we'll keep working on this uh, during the week, okay? All right, you're doing great, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Sorry, boys and girls. Um, if you don't, for some reason, you can't find any paper, um, then you can use your a whiteboard, or you could even use your dry erase sleeve, um, and then before you erase it, maybe take a picture or something to show your teacher, okay? All right, bye-bye.